All right, gross margin. <clears throat> gross margin, net margin, net profit, these are cost of goods sold. They're probably the most common uh, and basic phrases we'll use to discuss um, the bus your business, the costs associated with producing products, do you make money or not, um, do you make a profit under what circumstances. That's where you're going to hear all those phrases. So it's important to know that because it's a common language that you use to discuss um, the various pieces of your business. Really quickly, you can communicate to other people um, where the costs are associated in your business, how much revenue you're driving, if you're driving profit, under what circumstances. So getting a good understanding of gross margin, cost of goods sold, net margin, those phrases uh, is an important thing. So gross margin, uh, it's usually expressed as a percentage. And the way it's calculated, it's very simple, uh, is revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by revenue. Um, gross profit, which we'll talk about uh, on the other hand, you know, gross margin is a percentage, and it's the relationship between gross profit and revenue. Gross profit would simply be revenue minus cost of goods sold, right? So if you had $100 in revenue and it costs you 60 bucks to create your products, your gross profit would be $40. Your gross margin would be 40 over 100, would be 40%, all right? So uh, again, $100 revenue minus uh, $60 to produce the product, that is a gross profit of 40. That's that word, gross profit, that refers to the dollars. And the gross margin is simply 40 divided by 100 as a percentage, so 40%. So when I say my company has a gross margin of 40%, what I'm saying is for every $100 of revenue that I generate, I'm keeping $40 uh, to fund the other pieces of my business that aren't included in cost of goods sold. Uh, so it's essentially how much money do I have left over to work with after the cost of producing my widget or my product. And that's a very important number. Uh, it's, you're going to calculate this number on the income statement um, because that's where you can find revenue and cost of goods sold. Uh, and often it'll be shown on the income statement. Um, if not, it's very easy to grab those two numbers and calculate it over some period of, of time. Uh, so, like I said, it's the percentage of revenue that a company retains after the costs associated with production are, are figured into play or taken away. Um, something else that's, that's interesting is that it varies drastically across business segments. Uh, you know, software is generally known to have very high gross margins. The reason being that the costs of goods sold for software are very low. So, it doesn't cost much to create um, code. You need a few computers, you might see some ancillary software programs, but it's not like a car company where you need to buy steel and rubber and glass. Uh, so your gross margins are going to look really high. However, software companies have higher expenses in other areas, um, which you know can sometimes cause them to be not profitable. We'll talk about that in a second. So um, remember, when we're talking about net profit, you don't want to get confused. You don't want to confuse gross margin with net profit. Now, we're not talking about profit here. We're only talking about the relationship between revenue and the cost of producing the product, the cost of goods sold. When you're talking about profit, you're going to figure in a couple of other big things. One is called selling general and administrative expenses, and that's just what it sounds like. Uh, it's how, what does it cost to sell the product, what, you know, an office, uh, and all of your administrative expenses, salaries and things. Uh, and then also financial expenses, interest and taxes. So you have to take all these things into account before you can call a company profitable, of course. There's no money left at the end of the day. Even if your gross margin is 60%, so for every $100 you're retaining $60 and you're spending $75 on this stuff, then you're losing money. Uh, so that's an important thing to keep in mind, that gross margin is not the same as net profit or net margin. Uh, gross margin is exactly what it says here, revenue minus the cost of goods sold divided by revenue. So, uh, but how, by the way, it, it is actually a good indicator of whether or not a company might be profitable if they have a normal or healthy gross, gross, gross margin. Excuse me. <laughs> so let's look at gross margin related to some other metrics. The two important ones here that have already been mentioned are cost of goods sold and net profit. Um, remember, cost of goods sold is parts, materials, labor, overhead. It's the direct cost associated with producing your product. Um, net profit, on the other hand, is really just profit at the end of the day. Is there any profit left in the business? So that would be revenue minus cost of goods sold 
minus operating expenses, minus interest and taxes. This is the stuff I was mentioning here. So, you know, if you do $100 in revenue and your cost of goods sold is $60 and you have 40 left, and you're, you know, if revenue is 100, cost of goods sold is 60, operating expenses are 20, and interest and taxes are 10, you got 60, 70, 80, 90, you made a profit of $10, right? It's pretty simple. Um, so that, those are the numbers you're going to watch when concerned with profit. Um, cost of producing, operating expenses, interest and taxes. Uh, it's important to notice that gross margin is part of that. Gross margin is revenue minus COGS that divided by revenue, right? So it's just this piece. So let's look at an example of, of uh, Hasselhoff El Guapo action figures uh, that are being sold. Um, these action figures uh, apparently are very sought after by the ladies. So they're going for $100 a unit. So if this is our revenue right here, and this is our expense line right here, every unit we're driving $100 in revenue. Every unit costs me 50 bucks to get out of a factory in China. Uh, and if it costs me 50 bucks, that means that my gross profit revenue minus cost of goods sold is $50. That means my gross margin, remember expressed as a percentage, gross margin is the $100 in revenue minus $50 in cost of goods sold divided by $100, so that's 50%. So I can say I have a 50% gross margin on this product. Uh, that's pretty normal for manufactured goods. That would be bad for a software company. So what would a good outcome here be? A good outcome would be you've got revs of $100. You've got cost of goods sold of $50. You have a 50% gross margin. Your operating costs are only $40. And your interest, you don't have any debt, is zero. So how much profit would you have there? You'd have, you'd have cost of goods sold plus operating cost is 90. The revenue would be 100. So you'd have a net profit of 10. That would be a great outcome. You'd have a profitable company. What would a bad outcome be? Your revenue is $100 per action figure. Your cost of goods sold are $50. So you have a 50% gross margin. So same gross margin is the good example. Um, but the bad, the bad news here is your salaries and... Hasselhoff demanded a ridiculous contract for use of his name, so the operating costs were $100 per, per uh, action figure. In this case, you've got cost of goods sold and operating costs of $150 and only revenue of $100, so you've got a minus $50, you're losing $50 bucks on every action figure. It should be pretty straightforward. That's what gross margin is. It's revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by revenue. You're going to calculate it on the income statement, uh, and it's, a, it's an important number, but keep in mind it's very different than net profit. Net profit takes in the rest of the expenses in your business.